Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the supercharger system on a Mark I Toyota MR2, uh, and for, that's for North America years 1988 to 1989. And the Toyota engineer designed the supercharger system quite ingeniously, and so we're going to talk about the details of what they did, how it works, why they did it that way, and why it's really cool. Uh, before we get into the details though, we need to have an idea of the, you know, the system layout and also the flow path for air, as well as all the components that make up the system. So here drawn is a basic schematic of the uh, supercharger intake system. To begin, air enters the intake. It flows through the throttle body. And here it has two flow paths that are optional. It can either go through the supercharger or it can bypass the supercharger completely, going through something called the air bypass valve, and then meet up again here and go through the intercooler, through the intake manifold, then off to the engine. Uh, one, one more thing to note here is that there is a small uh, solenoid valve called the vacuum switching valve that can, can control the air bypass valve, and this is controlled using the ECU, which is the uh, engine's uh, computer. So this whole system was designed such that there can be two flow, flow paths for air. One is the green path, and one is the red path. And the Toyota engineers did this, uh, you know, for one, basically one reason, to increase the fuel economy while still having the performance of a supercharged system. And it's quite ingenious. It has, a, you know, some fail-safes. And we're going to talk about all the details here. But again, we need to get all the components here in our mind and get the flow path in our mind. So, you know, forget this, come back to it. But this is the basic system, systematic layout. And the one thing to remember is that this whole system is controlled by one sensor. And it take, it's right here. It's, called, it's a pressure sensor. And it measures the pressure in the intake manifold right before the air goes into the engine. So we're talking a lot, a lot about pressure in this video. So keep in mind, this is where the pressure is being sensed, right before the engine in the intake manifold. So just to recap, intake, throttle body, supercharger or bypass through the air bypass valve, intercooler, intake manifold, engine. Before we start talking about the details of the supercharger system, there's one more thing we need to understand properly, and that is pressure in the intake system. So when that sensor that we talked about before measures the intake manifold pressure, which is being measured right here, you know, what does it mean? What does a positive or a negative pressure mean? Okay, so begin with here, let's just start with a naturally aspirated engine. So very basic, there's a throttle body, intake manifold going into a cylinder. Let's just have a one cylinder engine right now. So if I start my car, I have, you know, no foot, my foot is off the gas, my throttle body is basically closed, and so there's not, not much air going into the cylinders, and my pressure drops to negative. So what does that mean? That means that the pressure being measured in the intake manifold is less than atmospheric. So this pressure here that we're measuring is something called gauge pressure which is different than absolute pressure. So we're measuring gauge pressure, which that's relative to the atmosphere. So, you know, you might ask yourself, why is it negative? Why is it less than the atmosphere in this situation? And it's a fairly simple explanation. So if I have, you know, no gas, the throttle body's closed, my piston is still going up and down. When my piston goes down, the volume of this chamber is increasing. And through the ideal gas law, which is a fairly basic relationship between pressure and volume of a gas, because the system is basically closed and fixed volume, you know, to begin with, then increasing in volume because my piston is going down, the pressure must decrease. And uh, this, you know, there's a fairly simple, you know, experiment you can do or thought experiment. Think about when you you know, have a bottle or a straw, and you hold it up to your mouth, and you start sucking. Okay, you know, 
it would flow air fine if the throttle was open. But if you close the end of that straw, like closing the throttle body, and you start sucking, which is basically like the cylinder moving down, uh, the pressure, the relative pressure inside that straw is diminished, is less. This is basically how a straw works. So, okay, so it goes down to a negative uh, gauge pressure. As I start opening the throttle, so I start, you know, putting gas on, on, in the engine, the system becomes more open. So that effect is lessened and my pressure increases. Now, in a naturally aspirated engine, I'm never going to get to the positive pressures because I don't have any mechanism of, of pressurizing over atmospheric. You know, the maximum I can get if this thing is completely open, it's an open system, is I would have zero. I would have atmospheric pressure. But if I have something you know, in between here, the throttle body and the intake manifold that pressurizes the incoming air, like a supercharger or a turbocharger, this it can become positive. So it's a positive gauge pressure. And this is, you know, when you read about turbochargers or about superchargers, and they say they're running at, you know, 8, 10, sometimes as high as, you know, 15 PSI. That's pounds per square inch above atmospheric. That's, that's a gauge pressure that they're measuring. It's positive. So this is the basics of pressure. And again, we're measuring the pressure in the intake manifold, which is right before it goes into the, into the engine block, right before it goes into the, into the cylinder. And so when we talk about the MR2 supercharger system, we're going to be using diagrams like this, gauge pressure diagrams. And just remember, this is a relative pressure to atmospheric. Negative corresponds to a closed system, you know, no supercharging, no tur turbocharging. And you can only get positive with one of those forced induction methods. All right, so now we're ready to talk about the specifics of the MR2 supercharger system and how it works, you know, in a typical situation uh, of driving. So uh, to begin with, there's two things to remember. Uh, I redrew the supercharger system here with the air bypass valve and the vacuum switching valve. And one more thing is a you know, fairly crude three-dimensional schematic of the supercharger itself. And there's a special mechanism on the front here of the pulley that can engage and disengage this pulley based on, on an electrical signal from the computer. So if the computer says on, you know, this pulley starts draining power from the engine and the supercharger is on. If it says off, this pulley just freewheels and it doesn't take any power from the engine. So it's basically, it's just, just doing nothing. So those, those are the two things, the electromagnetic clutch and the air bypass valve with the vacuum switching valve. Those are the two mechanisms that Toyota has designed to control the boost response, you know, the pressure, the gauge pressure response of this engine, which we're now going to talk about. So to begin with, uh, let's say I get in my car, I turn on my engine, my throttle's closed, I'm going to get a negative gauge pressure like we talked about. So my gauge pressure is going to drop. And again, this is the pressure being measured in the intake manifold. Okay. Uh, my Supercharger is not engaged. The clutch is disengaged, so it's just freewheeling. The supercharger is not taking any power from the engine. And my air bypass valve is open. So air is going around the supercharger. It's not going through the supercharger because the supercharger is not doing anything. So basically, I'm driving a naturally aspirated car right now. Okay, cool. Next, I'm going to increase my throttle. So I'm going to push down the gas pedal. I'm going to open my throttle, so my gauge pressure is going to increase. At a certain point, my gauge pressure passes a certain point, which I believe is 8 psi of vacuum. The computer tells this electromagnetic clutch to engage. So now the supercharger is on. It's stuck, you know, it's spinning. It's drawing power from the engine. But the air is still bypassing through uh, my air bypass valve, it's not going through the supercharger. So again, the supercharger is not doing anything. Okay, fine. I increase my throttle some more until I get it to another point, which 
is about at about five to six psi vacuum. And this is when my air bypass valve starts to close. So it's not you know an on-off thing. It's you know it's gradual. It starts gradually closing. So it starts gradually closing, which means that some of my air is being diverted through my supercharger. Not all of it, but more and more as it starts it closes more and more. So this changes my relationship here with my with my uh, gauge pressure. It increases. Okay, so I'm more throttle. This is closing more. More air is going through my supercharger. More air is being pressurized by the supercharger. When I get to zero gauge pressure, which is atmospheric, the computer tells the vacuum switching valve to close this air bypass valve completely. So it's completely closed because it can't do anything else. It's not useful anymore. We just close it. Okay, now all my air is going through my supercharger. My supercharger, as I throttle down more, as the RPMs go up, gives me lots of boost. Awesome. But, you know, it's not going to give me infinity boost. There's a limit. So they, what they did is they built in a failsafe into the system. When this gets to 8 psi of boost, uh, this air bypass valve starts to open through a different mechanism. So there's actually two mechanisms built into this. One that uses vacuum, you know, vacuum pressure down here to, to close it gradually, and one that uses positive gauge pressure, boost pressure, to open it when it gets to 8 psi. So when I get to 8 psi, this opens. So now I'm bypassing my supercharger again, so I can't get over 8 psi. It, it now tops out here. And this is a safety feature. I don't want to make more than 8 psi. I might damage my engine. I you know, get detonation, I damage my supercharger. So there we go, and there's that failsafe. And that's called the blow-off mode. So this air bypass valve has a bypass mode and a blow-off mode. So two mechanisms built into one device. But there's still this vacuum switching valve that has the ability to you know, override that air bypass valve. It can turn it on, it can turn it off whenever, whenever the computer wants. And this is useful in certain situations, like, say, I'm changing gears. So I'm revving up, you know, I'm getting lots of boost, and I change gears. What, what, what do you do when you change gears? You let go of the throttle. So that closes the throttle plate. My vacuum, my uh, pressure is going to go drop. You know, it's going to become negative because my pistons are sucking in air, but there's no more air coming in because the throttle's closed. So if I was just using this system without this vacuum switching valve, um, the air bypass valve would want to open up because I have large negative pressure. But I don't want that. I don't want my air bypass valve opening and closing, opening and closing while I'm switching gears uh, because I'm up here and I've got lots of boost. I want to continue with lots of boost in my next gear. I want this to remain closed. So what it does is when I switch gears, this vacuum switching valve tells this to remain closed for a certain number of seconds before anything else can happen. So it gives me you know, two to five seconds where nothing will change. This will remain closed, my supercharger will still be engaged, so that when I go back into gear, I'm back at my boost pressure. A really great system. And again, if I were to, say, turn my engine off, you know, I somewhere I park somewhere, or I'm coasting for more than five seconds, then this would stop telling this to, to stay closed, and it would just let the system figure itself out you know, mechanically instead of electro electronically, and my pressure would drop, I'd start bypassing my supercharger, and my clutch would disengage. So this is, you know, what's happening in a typical, uh, you know, throttle up. Throttle up. Start my car, throttle up, you know, clutch is engaged, my air bypass valve starts closing, vacuum switching valve closes it right here, and then my blow-off event occurs here so that I don't damage my system. So a really elegant and fairly mechanically simple system that has the ability to be overridden by the computer for you know nice nice feature control like when you switch, when you shift gears. And basically, you know, what this does is when I'm at down here, down in my low throttle, low RPM, my supercharger isn't doing anything. So I don't need it. I don't need it down here. I don't need tons of power. So that increases my fuel economy. 
But if I do need it up here, then my supercharger engages and I get lots of power. So I have a supercharged system, I have lots of performance, but I also have that increased fuel economy down here through this nice system. And I have a built-in failsafe. And one more thing we didn't discuss is why these are displaced. You know, why the clutch engages and the air bypass valve closing are, are spaced apart here in the pressure diagram. And that's to give a nice, you know, smooth transition, nice smooth overlap. You don't want things snapping into place. You know, the supercharger locks in and the air starts going through really quickly. So you really feel that uh, boost change right at that point. But since they occur at different points, it's a nice smooth increase in power as I put down my throttle. So again, this is with time, increasing time as I'm throttling up. Uh, this, is, this is the sequence of events of gauge pressure that is measured in the intake manifold, which correspond to you know, boost or vacuum. A really elegant system and you know, quite interesting. And you might wonder yourself, you know, how, do you, how do you figure this out? How do you figure out how this works? And basically, you take a look at the factory service manual, which I got online. Take a look at all the systems, how they work. You do some reading up online about, you know, the system, and you learn. You watch this video, you learn. And uh, if you have the, you know, the chance to drive one of these, you're very lucky. It's becoming very hard to find these cars. But uh, one more thing to talk about is the dashboard. Toyota built in a neat little feature uh, telling, you know, the driver when the supercharger is being engaged and disengaged. And I don't have a video clip of that, but I do have a picture of it. It's, uh, here you can see the, uh, the dashboard. And there's a little green light, a little green LED, and it says supercharger. So as soon as the supercharger is, you know, the electronic clutch is engaged, your air bypass valve starts, you know, diverting some of the air through the supercharger, getting boost, that green light turns on. And, uh, you know, you know you're getting boost. I mean, you can probably just feel it, but it's a nice little feature that Toyota built into the dashboard. So again, this is how the supercharger system in an MR2 Mark I works. Really cool. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you have any questions, send me an email. Send me a, a, a personal message by YouTube. But uh, this is pretty much all you should need to know.